Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to everybody in the chat. I'm Natalie and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where each morning I recap the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing, as well as talk about my 35 years in Scientology and leaving with three generations of my family. Hello to everybody on the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, check your button, Hit that like button, help us get notifications out. If you're catching this on the replay, jump into the conversation as well. Where are you watching from? What do you think? What are your questions? And if you have a question today, put question in all caps and the question after it. Super Chats get started automatically, but it'll help us locate those questions so much better. Thank you so much for my mods to, for being here today. I know my Tony's here and Nancy as well. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right. So today, today. Here's what we're going to be talking about. We are going to talk about Scientology's bait and switch recruitment tool that Celebrity Center is using, how the LAPD continues to prioritize Scientology's calls to them, expanding protests, more people across the internet covering Scientology and exposing Scientology, and a new message from Leah Remini that we're going to read and talk about towards the end. So stick with it. Stick with it. First, Oh my gosh, I saw something so funny. Some things I always wonder, like, do other people find this funny or is it just me? Because I was in Scientology and when it's made fun of, I often think it's so funny. In Scientology, one of the things that we do to learn about things when we're studying is we use what are called, well, we, we listen to me like I'm still doing it. We used clay demos. So what they do is if you're learning a new concept in Scientology, when you're doing a course, there's this thing called a check sheet and it's got all these different steps on it. And there's always clay involved where you demonstrate a concept in clay. And if you can do that, that means that you understand it. So there's a lot of playing with clay going on in Scientology. And this is from over at Scientology, The Big Lie. And he does this great, this great short showing a clay demo of a body thetan. And I swear to you, I did this exact same clay demo when I was doing the upper levels in Scientology, because that is totally what they have you do. And I remember this one, you had to actually do a clay demo of, of body thetans and some other things. And if, if you're not familiar, body thetans is part of the Scientology origin story where Xenu the Galactic Overlord threw some people in a volcano because of overpopulation, blew them up with hydrogen bombs, and the spirit and souls, which in Scientology are called Thetans, attached to the humans. And Scientology spends all of their upper levels getting rid of the body Thetans because that's supposed to make everything better. So, but let's let's take a look at this. I thought it was hilarious because it really shows you too. Because sometimes people ask, like, well, what do you mean with the clay demo? What do you mean with the labels? And that's pretty much what it looks like in Scientology. They'll take whole concepts. Sometimes the clay demo will take up the entire table. I remember when I used to have to do clay demos, I always wanted to take my time with it because sometimes you needed a break, especially if you were training in Scientology, you're studying all day into the evening. So like from 8 30, 9 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night, just barely to stop for for meals. You get one 15 minute break. So the clay demos always kind of broke it up. Yesterday was also Lara FM's birthday. And she did such a fun video where she had people jump in and join her. And we're just going to look at a little bit of that because I, one thing I love about people coming together in this community is the sharing of information and the sharing of knowledge. And I often talk about how, like, I've been out of Scientology for about 13 years now, but in many ways, I feel like I just arrived on the planet 13 years ago. And there's so many, and I think that's why I just like consume. I always want to, there's so many things I want to learn. And I think Lara's like that too. And she's talking about what she's learned from DOA, Defender of Ants. But the whole link's down below to all the videos that I'm talking about. She did a really fun video. If you get a chance, go check it out. When I met you is that you know 
speaking of education and laws, is he knows a lot to a degree about um, dealing with these police officers in the chair, like these 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 the, like bullies that think that they can just come in and like with these this fake authority and be like, you know, like you're listening to me. It's like, no, we're all like one thing I've realized through the protesting a lot and through learning through uh, Scotty is is the knowledge of being like when you're loaded with knowledge it's kind of like a game if you know how to handle the police officers that are being corrupt or disrespectful you know when their job is not there they're there to be helpful and to to and so we forget about that because they've uh sort of brainwashed us with this fake authority i just love that again, just like knowledge tips and understanding of how the world works. That's a lot of why I like rabbit down the, down the rabbit hole news. And I'm going to share a clip coming up with her and Ono oh Nora, her background. It just makes her so perfect to address and identify and use what I like to call real world words, not just Scientology to explain, help people who've been in Scientology and honestly, any high control group to really understand and put the correct words to it. So I love that. I love seeing these friendships come together. Last night over on L1 Hubbard Way was usual shenanigans of police showing up so quickly for dumb stuff. But when Jessica Palmadessa needed them the other night when she got punched, what happened? Two hours, nobody. Three hours, nobody. It's just like you think they're going to show up and they don't. It was like when I was a kid and I would wait for my dad to pick me up for a visit and he never did. My um, my biological dad, when my parents, my dad, my biological dad was never in Scientology. And we'll talk about that whole thing another time. I don't want to digress too much. But the point is the police didn't come when she needed them, but they show up for like all this other stuff. So this is, I think this link down to Jessica Palmadessa's video. Let's take a look. Wait, this can't be Jessica's because she is over there. Whose video is it? Hey! DOA! Kelly Cam. Guys, DOA just got here. Let's see. Ah, oh, they don't even have it on. They have it on over here? So LA Cam, this is his video. And one of the things that the protesters have done is found, you know, the screen in the police car that say why the call came in. And it looks like the, the police, at least in this instance, is shaking it up because they did not have it up. Nope. They they learned now. They learned to shut all their uh, their signals off and the uh, the messages on their um displays. So did they? Are they shaking it up? Are they not gonna have you know show those anymore? I I don't know. I don't know. The police were there. The police were on, I think it was over on Fountain. They showed up for, I think they said it was a call because of a bullhorn, which there's a little bit of confusion on when you're allowed to do it and not allowed to do it because it sounds like protesters thought it was till 10 o'clock, but the police made it sound like it was any time if somebody calls in a complaint for noise. And again, another example, here they are showing up like quick, right after somebody called, but when somebody's actually assaulted, if it's a protester, if it's not a call being made by or for Scientology, they just, they dilly dally if they show up at all. So take a look. 1001. No, yeah, we talked before. Well, we could do noise before 10, right? So you can't direct noise out. So they're going on about the megaphone, and they like just got the call and they showed up so fast. And this is on Jessica Palmadessa's video, link down below to her whole video from last night. It just, there's no shame. Where's the shame? Where's the shame? <laughs> I feel like they should be embarrassed, but they're not. I don't get it. What's happening? We're going to jump over to Clearwater. Lori Plays, our girl in Clearwater, walked into the Scientology Testing Center in Clearwater. Now, there's no audio on this video because I think she accidentally had it muted. But I thought it was interesting that, one, that they were open. And secondly, that she just walked in. She walks in. She looks around for a bit. 
and then she's out of there. But that's, it's kind of rare that we've seen anybody be allowed to walk in like that. I mean, it looked like the girl at reception was obviously on the phone with somebody to put a stop to this. Somebody walked in, they're looking at things. Oh my goodness. Put a stop to it. Security, security. Check it out. And again, her, her volume, I think was, or her mic was muted. So she goes in, she's looking around there, checking it out. And then there's the girl at reception. She's, she's not having it. She's not having it. I'm sure she's talking to security. Got the hand sanitizer right there. All neat and tidy. Promo lined up there. What? I mean, we got to give it to them though. I mean, it's a beautiful space. Scientology does have some big, beautiful, empty spaces. Think about what good could be done with some of these buildings. With, pro with programs actually helping people in the community. I mean, think about that. What could be done with this space? When I see the insides of these Scientology buildings and nobody there, that's a thought I often have is why not? Well, there's Lori Place there. Why not put it to some good? Lori says, I found out I was close enough to my car that my phone was connecting to an earbud in my car. So bad at myself. Don't worry about it, Lori. This is great. This is still, that's great footage from the inside. And I'm so surprised that you really made it in there as long as you did. Thank you so much for sharing that. We're going to jump over to Chicago where we like to see, what is it? Trashy V12 BMW. He, and I think there's another gal, Shannon, who is in Chicago. And you guys know how Pearl Snappy in Austin, is she shows in front of the Austin ideal organization that's about to open, how there's the garbage bags over the sign. And we're going to actually take a look at that in one of uh, Pearl Snappy's clips. There's a garbage bag over the signs that's fallen down. This is in Austin. And it says F Scinto, basically, because it's like F Scientology, because not the whole sign is showing. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm going to share it anyways in a little bit because it's still on. <laughs> I mean, it's still showing like that. But over in Chicago, the kid goes by and check this out. Garbage bag tech is strong in Scientology. This is in Chicago. Same garbage bags. Over this time. Only partly over the logo right now. Why? Is it because they're not hoping yet? I have so many questions. Why are we seeing this? I, is that it? That they just want to cover up? They don't want people to know that Scientology is moving into this building until they actually do it. That sounds on brand for Scientology. So maybe that's why. I don't know. I'm speculating. I'm totally speculating. But I think that's true. <laughs> Pearl Snappy, if you're here, you tell me what you think. And by the way, people... Tonight, uh, I think we settled on 5.30 Central Time. Pearl Snappy is going to join me on a live and we're going to get caught up on what she's been doing in Austin, what is happening, what she's been seeing, and what inspires the incredible songs that she comes up with. That's going to be this evening, so keep an eye out for that. But thank you so much, Chicago, for what you guys are doing. Keep sharing. Remember, if you see something, say something. Natalie at tonkatalk.com. Send me a clip, timestamp. I love it when it's just really clear that this is what you're looking at. This is the time that it happened or an actual clip of it. It really helps me in putting this together. So speaking of Pearl Snappy, we are going to jump over to Austin because our girl is out there doing her thing in front of Scientology. And she was out in front of the new building that they're about to open supposedly on February 24th. It really looks that way. She did a great video the other night laying out the permit process and what, what she's expecting to come and what she is going to do about it. Check it out. What's the biggest or any main change that you've noticed protesting in this area? Well, they don't come outside and sell books anymore. It does still say F Sciento. It does. This just kills me. Why do they leave? Um, so the biggest thing that I have noticed is that they don't sell books out here anymore. They're certainly much more well aware of my existence. And I think they thought that they had um, escaped my my voice and my songs, Never. which why would you want to? Um, but by just hanging out at the temp org. But 
oops, we found you. Oops, we've known that you've been there all along and no one's interested in your child trafficking cult. <laughs> she just says it like it is. And she is there showing what's happening in Austin. When she first showed up on the scene, they would set up their tents, their e-meter and their Dianetics books. And she, I think she holds the record for shutting that down three minutes or three and a half minutes. I'm not sure what it was. And we just all appreciate it. And she's so hilarious to watch. So I'm really looking forward to chatting with her this evening. I hope you guys can catch it live, 5.30 Central Time. I'll get out a notification as well. Now, there was this channel that I did not know about that somebody sent, introduced me to, and I'm so thankful for it. It's this channel called Papa Meat. <laughs> and he's talking about the creepiest town in America, Clearwater. It's Clearwater. Spoil alert. It's Clearwater and it's Scientology. And I grabbed a clip. It's a great video. It's not very long, but it really gets into the meat and potatoes. I love the research that he did and shares about Scientology and about the raids by the FBI back in the day. And he really shares how Scientology's original plan to take over Clearwater, which is still in play, people. It's still in play. Check it out. These plans to take over the city were uncovered when the FBI raided the Scientology headquarters in Los Angeles and Washington. Documents showed that the United Churches of Florida was created as a front to protect church assets from seizure by the government. There was also Operation... Back in the day when Scientology was setting up in Clearwater, that's what they called themselves on the paperwork. Freak out, which was a plan to get Paulette Cooper, a critic of the church, committed to a mental institution. There were also additional documents stating that Scientology had plans for complete world control. Imagine being an FBI agent, just United Churches of Florida. This, it's just them documenting everything that they're illegal they're doing in this front to protect all their assets, which is just a vault full of gold. They also claim they own a dragon. That can't possibly be true. Because of the raids, 11 church leaders were charged with conspiring to steal government documents, theft of government documents, and conspiring to obstruct justice. And even though plans to take over Clearwater were halted, this did not stop the church from continuing to buy as much property as they could. These plans to take over... I love this. I love it so much. He did a great job. I'm curious of two things. One, I, I was wondering what inspired him. I got in his comments, but you know, I mean, his channel's huge, so I don't know if he'll even see it. I'm curious about what inspired him to do the video, and I would love to talk to him. The other thing is, what's up with the dragon? That's that's news to me. That's news to me. 35 years in Scientology, we had dragons. Nobody told me. I feel like I missed out. I feel gypped. What's the deal? I feel like if anybody was going to know about the dragons, it would have been me. <laughs> I never heard about this. Is it on an upper level? Somebody fill me in if you know, because I don't know anything about those dragons. And obviously I'm upset about it because I would have liked to have known. It would not have kept me in Scientology. I will say that. But I would have liked to have known about, you know, dragons. So whatever. Hopefully somebody can fill me in on that. I got to talk to some other people in the ex-Scientology community too, if they've ever heard of that. Because I have not. I have not. And I love a good dragon story. Okay. But you got to go check out his whole video. I, I just subscribed to his channel, Papa Meat. I just love the name. Papa Meat. Papa Meat. M-E-A-T. Meat. Papa Meat. All right. So 51-49 with James Lee did a war against Scientology on Hollywood Boulevard video. And he talks to William Goode, Scientology Audit, Streets L.A., and I always, I always, you know what? I could listen to William Goode all day long, talk about stuff and share about stuff. I just love his style and how he does it. And I have so much respect for what he's done in Hollywood to not just expose Scientology, but the attention he brings to the LAPD and the education that he does with these kids who are out there protesting and live streaming as well. It, it's just, it just helps on so many levels. I just love it. Take a listen. Listen, Scientology is dependent upon people not knowing what Scientology is. They need to use deception. People are now learning what Scientology is. And again, it's synonymous with the term, it's a cult. I was born into it. So there was no, there was no like outside schooling, outside life, outside friends, outside anything. You're completely shut out from the world. And yeah, it's, it's, that's 
the definition of a cult. It's definitely all of that. In a groundbreaking lawsuit against Scientology and its leader, David Miscavige, former Scientologists alleged that beginning from childhood, they were required to sign a billion year contract and commit a lifetime of service to Scientology, providing unpaid or extremely low paid labor, including landscaping, food service and janitorial work, regularly enduring verbal abuse, crowded living conditions and sleep deprivation. Yes, that was uh, Valerie Haney, I believe, from the 60 Minutes interview that she did. Good is the dude. You guys are right. I totally agree. I totally agree. Total fangirl over here. Love what he's doing. I really love it. And that video, link down below to the full video, another one totally worth watching. And I love that there's so many creators across YouTube that are looking into this for themselves and finding out the truth about Scientology and sharing and exposing, especially the history, because the history predicts what they do now and what they're going to do, because Scientology can only follow one playbook, and that is the one by L. Ron Hubbard, and he wrote it way back in the day. It didn't really help then when it comes to handling public relations issues. You guys maybe can tell. I don't think that's a secret, right? Everybody knows Scientology has the worst public relations in, I think, on the planet. Wasn't there a survey done once of what religions do you hate the most or what are the worst religions? It was something like that. And Scientology tied with Satanism. <laughs> I mean, how bad you got to be? It's, it's yet they don't get it. They won't change because they have to. Part of the mind control and the doctrine is that you have to follow L. Ron Hubbard and what he says. So they have to do these same types of getting people in through some type of bait and switch to make them think they're coming in for one thing. And it's really, it's a front group or it's a recruitment tool. And this is a clip that we're going to share that again, link down below for the full video. This is from Film Talk Now did this video. I also put a link down below to literally Surge because Surge breaks it down and he does a great um, overview of this video and gives his take on it and his two cents. So there's a link down below to Surge's video as well. But check this out. This is an actual phone call, actual phone call with somebody talking to somebody at the Celebrity Center on which is in Hollywood, right across from La Poubelle, the restaurant that was getting majorly protested the other day because of the owner's support of Danny Masterson, right across the street. It's the Celebrity Center. It's the Manor Hotel, which is where Scientologists stay. It's a hotel run by Scientology. And this is a big thing at the Celebrity Center where they host these meet the producer, meet the casting director kind of a thing. We'll hook you up. We'll get you involved. And right? What is it really? It is recruitment. It is a recruitment tool for Scientology. So take a listen. So it is a, it's a meet and greet here at the Scientology Celebrity Center. So that's yeah. the Scientology place that caters to the arts and entertainment. And so yeah. you, as part of it, you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Kathy, who's the casting director and where you can get advice, you know, or help with any, any area of life that you want help with, whether that's, you know, confidence or taking better advantage of the opportunities that you have or, you know, how to stop procrastinating, all sorts of things that you might run into as an actor, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, you guys have these kinds of, you guys good? have like a lot of these, you guys have like a lot of these kinds of uh, meet and greet usually? Like, uh, is there like, the meet and greet is normally on Saturdays. Occasionally we'll have one at different times. Um, okay. and then we, we generally do an acting class on Monday and Wednesday night. Monday and Wednesday night, they do an acting class each week. They do this meet and greet with a casting director, but they put it out often as if it's this one time thing and it's so exclusive. I'm sure it is. Cause now you probably got to clear all these hoops with security. It just makes me wonder how are they still doing this? <laughs> Is anybody showing up? People do. I'm sure that Scientologists and new Scientologists do as well, who maybe are there. I mean, I'll get, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Here's what I do know. Down the rabbit hole news did an interview with Oh No Nora, link down below. And they really are getting into, I think we're all 
maybe some of you probably already know about this in Scientology. It's called dead agenting or to dead agent someone, which Nora's going to go on and explain, but it's basically where they try to get people to believe you're crazy or to discredit you in some way through sharing outright lies, half truths, even maybe a truth, but out of context. So it's twisted. And uh, the vast majority of the time, it just makes Scientology look even crazier because people are like, why are you telling me this? Why are you telling me this about that person? They're so crazy. Like they would try when I left to dead agent me by sharing this information with people who had no idea. So they would have like, you know, maybe they would have remained connected to me or not, but they didn't know any of the drama. And Scientology basically was like, here's all the drama, which then was destabilizing for them as Scientologists because I was a longtime Scientologist with a multi-generational family in Scientology. So it was shocking to people in my area where, when I left and uh, dead agenting was a tool that Scientology tried to use and failed because other people ended up leaving from the Twin Cities where I am, and in part because of this tactic that Scientology uses. Well, let's take a look at, at this. And this is where Nora is going to explain about dead agenting. And this is down the rabbit hole news. I love rabbit. Okay, check it out. Let us know. Yes. So, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. where did I put that? Because I had it up. I had to read it. So, a dead agent, um, in the simplest terms, is when you have information mm -hmm. about a person and they are attacking you. Okay. And it's basically performing a group magic trick. Okay. So, you want to erase whatever is the factual data that someone wants to think about this person or subject, and you want to put in all of your data on top of that, okay, so that only your data is the one that is trusted. So you go category by category, thing by thing, and explain away um, why Whatever the statement, the person, their belief, whatever, is completely the opposite. It's such a great video. Definitely go check it out. She does a great job of explaining that. And it so often backfires with Scientology. It's, again, another example of this didn't work back in the day. Maybe it did to a degree because you could kind of get rid. You could, you could get by with your shenanigans a little bit more Scientology because there wasn't the internet. And there definitely wasn't somebody. I mean, there was the internet, but not like it is today. And there definitely wasn't somebody there live streaming the whole thing. Today, it's just so easy and quick to call them out and see through it. And here's the other thing that Scientology did not predict, does not recognize. And that's that we as humans can hold more than one thought in our head about somebody or something. We can agree to disagree. It doesn't mean we're, oh, I'm just throwing you out completely because of this one thing. Maybe I'm some people do do that. I know this, but more and more we're seeing like, hey, so you can think this, I can think that, and we can still have a good time over here. It, it's just, they don't count on that. They think that people will respond the way that they do, which is very, as they would say, stimulus response. It's a stimulus response. And uh, I'm here for it. I'm not going to lie. Their responses to stuff is what keeps this all going. <laughs> Yesterday also, I did an interview with Mike Brown, and I'm going to share a link to that. It was so insightful for me. I appreciated his openness and his honesty so much. And it, I just feel like we're just watching in real time, seeing Mike Brown just just what's the word blossom should not i don't think that that's the correct word but you know what i mean and become maybe not totally comfortable yet he talks about how it's hard for him to receive that admiration right and i i get that because not only did he go from scientology for so long from a 10 year old boy and in the sea organization till he was 27 years old. He then several months later went right into the military, into the army where he still is today. He teaches people how to fly helicopters, which is pretty badass. That is pretty awesome. But I'm going to share a little bit from that. And if you get the chance, 
go watch this interview with him because I'm just blown away. I'm just blown away. I'm a blown away by him. And I agree so much with a lot of what, what he said. But let us take a look at this one part here. Anything that's coming down at you, you can't complain about your situation. Like mm -hmm. the things that exist, you know, protections for the people in the workplace, those don't exist in Scientology. You have to just be like subservient in, in totality. And you also can't, like if Natalie and I didn't like something, we can't be like, this is, this guy's a jerk. You can't do that. Everyone yeah. thinks that everyone else thinks everything's great. And they're the only one that's having the bad thoughts. So they try to keep it to themselves, like something's wrong with you. There is a lot of that where you're led to believe that you are the only one who is thinking that way or feeling that way. And I think that's a lot of the trap of then not mm -hmm. being able to communicate. Because can you imagine in this organization, if we would have been allowed to have open communication with each other, like mm -hmm. what, how many more things could be, could be resolved, but not being able to talk mm -hmm. about, that's one way to make it seem like everybody's winning but you is to force people to never be able to say how they really felt. Can you that is a big control piece in Scientology and in the C organization. This whole idea of not being able to be honest about your emotions and your feelings out of fear because of the snitch culture that exist and existed and how it, which it's so... It, it's you really got to do mental gymnastics to be a Scientologist. You do. It, it involves a lot of mental gymnastics because on one hand, and the C organization, especially in Scientology in general, you're not allowed to say, hey, I don't like this. If it's something that the church is doing, right? Or a staff member, a representative of the church, you're not allowed to do that. But boy, is it your senior or somebody above you allowed to come down on you and berate you and make you feel less than and use anger and those tactics to control you. There, there's just none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. But Mike does a great job at his whole story. I'm just fascinated by him going from the Sea Oregon to the military and now years later, you know, rescuing his mom from elder abuse in the Sea Organization and having the opportunity to have these conversations with her and share and put two and two together is just so incredibly healing. And that, I feel like that was the topic of our conversation last night was healing. How do we heal? How do we, how can we best support people who are struggling? And it's not only people who just left or are leaving. Mike makes a good point. Sometimes you leave for a long time and then you start unpacking things and you're going to need some help. You're going to need some help. Okay. We're going to jump over now and we are going to talk about Le uh, Leah Remini. She has not written anything in a while and she came out with something on her sub stack. So we're going to, we're going to read through that, take a look and, and we're going to talk about it. So let's go down here. So this was February 12th, so February 12th, some progress. Okay, so she says, I've been doing something unfamiliar and uncomfortable lately, saying yes instead of no to opportunities that involve leaving my home and venturing into the world. This is a big deal for me because in recent years, I've said no to a lot, from invitations to go out with friends to attending events and traveling. As some of you know, since I escaped from Scientology in 2013, I have been followed constantly by Scientology operatives and agents. These people hide in the shadows to monitor my movements and who I am meeting with so they can report back to Scientology's intelligence agency, the Office of Special Affairs, which reports directly to David Miscavige. They also snap unflattering pictures of me to body shame me and use these photos in their latest campaigns in an attempt to undermine and destabilize me. She's, she's, she's totally being fair game. This is a good example of even like some of the dead agenting that Scientology tries to do. Their posts include salacious headlines similar to Leo with no job, abandoned by Hollywood because she's a bigot. They call me a bigot because I oppose Scientology's abusive practices and, quote, Leah's sitting alone because she has no friends. That, they hope, will have an impact on me psychologically, but also on people who are in my life or might consider being in my life. Scientology has gone 
from those tactics, which are bad enough, to hiring vulnerable people living with severe mental illness to harass and intimidate me. Side note, we've seen this with the protesters in Los Angeles. Even last night, there's a guy that showed up a couple of times, stole Defender Event's chair. He actually got hauled away in cuffs last night because I'm assuming drunk and disorderly because he definitely was. Okay, back to this. These people who are being exploited by a tax-exempt organization with religious status do not know who they are working for and why they're doing it. Among the many things they've done is break into my gated community. Scientology has no problem putting me, my family, my friends, and those I work with in danger. And so, as much as I have a persona of being a tough broad from Brooklyn, and as tough as I would like to be, their harassment does have a significant impact on my mental and physical health. And as Scientology intends, it has had an impact on anyone who might consider working with me to stop and reconsider because this criminal, unethical, and immoral conduct is what they would be exposing themselves to. It has been a decade since I fled from Scientology with my family, but it is a constant struggle to push myself to experience my life. I will have a good day and think to myself, okay, tomorrow I'm going to continue to do things that I want to do, and then depression takes over. I get, consu- I get consumed by fear and find every reason not to go. I have to fight this in myself every day. The process starts all over again from the moment I wake up. I want to get out. I want to experience so many things, including the mundane. And most days, I don't. For me, a big win for my day is visiting a friend, visiting my mom and playing canasta with her and her friends. I often post photos and videos of doing mundane things because to my friend, mundane things too, to my friends, because I quietly celebrate going, going through with it. It's huge. Given my depression and very warranted fears of being hunted, as well as my concerns for my friend's safety, is a big thing to overcome. I wanted to share what I've been going through because if any of you feel this way, whether it's depression, anxiety, or any other reason, I understand. While our experiences may not be the same, the manifestation of what we are facing is similar. On top of my struggles with depression, my body has seemed to change overnight. Something women my age, 53, oh, she and I are the exact same age. Some, um, I got all distracted now. On top of my struggles with depression, my body has seemed to change overnight. Something women my age, 53, go through naturally. Girl, yes. But I know it still comes as a shock to many of us. Not only did I, out of nowhere, break out into hives and have some allergic reaction to something for which I now have to carry an EpiPen everywhere I go, but I am also going through perimenopause. Girl, I got the the menopause fan right here. I'll have to show it to you. (laughs) One can go through perimenopause for many years before reaching menopause. It's been awful. Some go through it and never have symptoms, but some of us struggle and struggle hard. If I didn't find friends like Michelle, is it Visage, Visage, who knows a hell of a lot about the subject of perimenopause and menopause and our excellent OBGYN, this entire experience would have put me over the edge. If you've read this, if you've read this far, thank you. I wrote this because I often feel very alone in experiencing it and in writing about this and sharing it publicly I hope to feel less isolated and hope I can make some of you feel the same. That's just, I, I, it, you know what? The hives even, I remember experiencing that. I would break out in hives <laughs> and didn't know why. My doctors didn't know why. And the same thing, EpiPen. Um, it, it's just so, it's so raw. And I think it's easy to forget what it really is like for her. that, And I'm so glad that she shared this one girl, you are not alone. There's all of us. And I, we are the exact same age. And like I said, every day I have the menopause fan here. <laughs> I have one at work. I mean, I, I get it. And I'm glad you're talking to people who know a lot about that and who can help with that. But all of that together on, can you guys imagine you leave your house to go, you want to go to Target? You want to go do some shopping, right? And being 
followed, being hunted, having unflattering photos of you taken and use it, used as a way to intimidate you. This has a big effect on the individual and all of the people around them too. Because you do, I get what she's saying. You would think, well, I'm going to be exposing people to this, you know, to this as well. Let's jump in. Let's jump into some questions here. Mother of cats, do we think she, Leah, is trying to keep Mike Rinder sweet to protect her lawsuit? No idea. I, I actually, I, I don't know. Um, you guys tell me what you think about that in the comments or in the chat. Uh, let's see. Diana, how have Scientology not fixed the sign? She's talking about the Austin thing. Girl, I know. I know. I don't know. I don't know why they don't fix the sign. <laughs> but let's be honest. I'm happy. I'm happy they don't fix the sign because it's hilarious. And uh, yes, Nancy, birthday game, 20,000. I will touch on that again. 20,000 subscribers by L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. That is my gift to him. It's on March 13th. And we're well on our way, people. So hit that subscribe button and thank you. Uh, Carly, after listening to your chat with Mike Brown, I think second gen should be renamed involuntary Scientologists <laughs> to really highlight that they had no choice in being raised in Scientology. That is funny. I totally, I totally get that too. I totally get that. Viggy Cat, who cares about the acting classes in Scientology? Let's see the dragon. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. I'm totally like... I, I got to find out about that. Where did that come from? Or was he just kidding? I don't know. But now I'm going to be obsessed with it and have to find out. So thanks a lot, Papa Meat. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you guys for the kind the kind comments. Yes, F. Sainto, don't fix the sign. Uh, CB, Natalie, I feel so much compassion for Leah. I could have written most of that letter. What she doesn't mention is the trauma. Coming out of a cult and learning to live in a different world. This is very true. And I think that something that is, I feel like it's so easy to forget the same things that many of us, you know, she's a second generation Scientologist too. Her mom was in Scientology. And so much of what she's experiencing is what a lot of us talk about. Even those of you never in Scientology, you know what it's like if you've been harassed or stalked or intimidated in an abusive relationship. You know what that's like. And she's getting it on a whole nother level. And I just, oh, I just have a lot of empathy and compassion for that because I know it's not easy. And when I left Scientology 13 years ago, and I, I was speaking out about it for a while, and then I would, you know, I was having different things happen here and there with some harassment, which I was like, whatever. I mean, my life is pretty boring, but okay, if you want to take a peek, um, that all stopped when Leah Remini's show came out because she really took the biggest hits and continued to, and I think continues to. Um, so I know that I have a lot of gratitude for what she's done and continues to do. And I don't know, like OBG Foster, I don't understand the question about Mike Rinder, her suit is about her. Um, yeah, her suit's about her. I think that it gets, there are, you know, there, there is a lot of upset currently with Mike Rinder in regard to how he responds, how he, it, I think the summary for me is in how he's respond to things at time and hasn't been very helpful with helping the victim, focusing on the victim. Lulu saying, did you see late on Tao, Tao's Danny live yesterday? Today, the police in the parking lot with security looked so shady. Yeah, there were police in the parking lot outside the blue buildings. And I agree, didn't quite, I, I don't think anybody understood what they were doing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab a couple questions. Mother of Cats comment, what, what Leah says is absolutely supporting the attacks. The Squirrel Squad? Oh, yeah, totally. Because that's what they're doing to, to them too. What's happening to her with the harassment, right? And being followed is happening to them as well. It's totally, it's totally a thing. It's totally a thing. And if you're if you're joining later, go go read her. The, I put a link down below to her Substack to that. Amy says Scientology needs a project of testimonies of ex-Scientologists, like there is for Holocaust survivors, called the Shoah Project, done by Steven Spielberg. Oh, wouldn't that be something? 
that would be something. Chi Chicana, I love when DOA gets frustrated with the chat and threatens to end the stream to listen to Natalie instead because she's calming and laid back. So funny. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. I, I, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad to be a source of some calm. <laughs> Just a Northern girl. I'm sure I'm not alone in showing appreciation for all your hard work every morning. Is there anything all your tipsters can do to make your life easier when emailing you daily info? Thank you so much. Really just putting, if you can clip the video ahead of time, um, or at least the timestamp and this is what happened at this time would be super helpful because sometimes people send me links, but it's to a two hour video and it's, we're getting, there's so much content, you guys, as you know, on the internet, there's so much to cover and I could probably easily do a recap in the evenings. And maybe one day I will have the bandwidth for that. I like that time for my interviews and be able to collaborate with other creators as well. But there is a lot. So I would appreciate that when you send it to Natalie at Tonkatalk.com to, you know, be very specific with what it is that I'm looking at the timestamp or even a clip um, because it, it's super helpful. And truly, I appreciate it. you guys really helped me a lot with that. Smooth Steve, thank you. In my opinion, Leah Remini needs to ditch Mike Rinder to feel empowered again. I can see that. I can see that. I, you know, my hope really is, is that people really rally around her because we talk about supporting victims a lot on SPTV. And she, that was, that was raw. That was vulnerable. And she's saying, hey, I feel alone. That breaks my heart. I don't want her to feel alone and do not feel alone in the menopause and the perimenopause because girl, we are the menopause army right here <laughs> and we've been through it. I get it. It will mentally mess with you and uh, you're not alone in that. It happens to all of us. That's why I have the fan. That's why it's just, you just embrace it. Um, so show her some love. I think you can comment on that. I just... Like I said, I just, my heart really goes out to her because the worst thing is to feel alone when you're being harassed by Scientology. And when you are really, in, she's doing this lawsuit, which is putting her out there even more and making her even more a target for Scientology. I wish we could all just stand in front of her like this <laughs> and be protective. And uh, yes, we love you, Leah. Share that message, get it out. As you know, and, and, Again, as a woman too, it's like, you're, you're not alone, sister. You're not alone. We are right there with you and know how difficult it is to deal with life in general. You know, I'll give you in a nutshell. You grow up as a woman, you go through puberty and you think like, oh my gosh, that's rough. But then you think like, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it now. And then you start going through life, you get older, and then you go through another one with these changes in your body and your mind. And, but there is light on the other side of the tunnel. I will say that for sure. So uh, Natalie at TonkaTalk.com. If you see something, say something. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like button to help get this message out. I appreciate all of you so much. My mods, Nancy, Dip Me in Glitter. I'm not sure if she's here this morning. She was here last night. And, and my Tony, I appreciate all of you so much. We're able to do what we do on this channel because of all of you who are continuing to show up, who contribute with your comments, helping to spread the message. And I am playing the birthday game with Scientology. And that is in Scientology, they have, they have to get their statistics straight up and vertical. And we were always forced to do it all the time. So as a non-ex-Scientologist, I'm playing a game to grow my channel to 20,000 subscribers by L. Ron, Hubbard, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday, which is March 13th, as my present to Scientology, to L. Ron Hubbard for his birthday and David Miscavige. I just love that. I get such a kick out of that. So thank you for supporting me on that. And in the meantime, I hope you guys all get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.